32 bits is dead. Now, I know that might be hard for you. You know, that could be emotional. But I'm here to help. I'm a shoulder for you to cry on. Let us remember fondly our memories of 32-bit computing, but we have to understand that it is no more. It has shuffled off its mortal coil. It is dead. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. 32-bit computing is dead. Now, what does that mean? Well, of course, if we go back to the beginning of the kind of the home computer revolution, look at the 80s, you had some great 8-bit computers, 8-bit processors, 6502, absolute classic, did loads of assembly programming in 6502 back in the day, the Zilog uh, Z80. Then ultimately, of course, we moved to 16-bit computing, I suppose the 8086, the 80286, two very, very popular 16-bit processors. But then eventually, 32-bits came along, uh, the 80386 and, and onwards, and then of course, ARM chips and so many other different chips. 32-bits is where we've stuck now for a long time, I mean, several decades. Now, I remember when I was working uh, back for Digital Equipment Corporation back in the mid-90s, the first 64-bit alpha servers came out. In fact, because uh, DEC was an American company, the first alpha server that I ever saw was in a locked cage because it was considered to be military grade hardware. And the only way in to access it was with a special card key. And you went into this cage and you did the stuff you needed to do. Now, of course, 64-bit computing is absolutely everywhere nowadays. Things have moved on, but 32-bit computing has kind of been lingering. It's kind of been hanging on for its dear life. But we can definitely say now that it's dead. It's gone, it's buried. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Okay, so what has sparked this off is that this year, ARM have announced that by 2023, all of its Cortex-A processors, that's the processors designed for smartphones, will be 64-bit only. No more 32-bit compatibility, 64-bit only. Not 64-bit with the ability to run 32-bit code, 64-bit only. And so really this is a watershed that marks the death of 32 bits. So what do we mean by 32 bits? Well, of course, a bit is a one or a zero. This is base two binary. And so when you have 32 ones and zeros like this, doo -doo 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 that is a 32 bit number. There's a bit of an Easter egg hidden, hidden in here if you can work out what that is. So because it's base two, two to the power of 32 different values, that means four through to 4,294,967,295. If you want to store a number bigger than that, it won't fit into 32 bits. And of course, this is where you get this thing about four gigabytes of memory and 32 bits, because if you're addressing in 32 bits, that is the number you get for four gigabytes. So what is a 32-bit CPU? Well, basically one that internally has registers that are 32 bits wide. It can do operations on integers 32 bits wide. It can generally address memory up to 32 bits wide. And it has a 32-bit data bus, which means the external connection to the world is also over 32 bits. It doesn't necessarily include 32-bit floating point operations. That's always been a separate thing because floating point is more complicated, it's difficult. You're, you always need kind of special hardware, a floating point unit inside of a chip, and that's often done differently. So we're talking about integers and registers addressing and data bus. Now, of course, there have always been exceptions before you leap down into the comments and start writing, but didn't you know about the, yes, I did know about the whatever. And the classic, of course, is the Motorola 68000 because it had a 32-bit instruction set, had 32-bit registers, but it actually did its arithmetic. The ALU was actually only 16 bits. So sometimes it's called a 16 slash 32 bit uh, processor. And there are other exceptions. For example, the Pentium Pro was 32 bits uh, internally, but it had a 36 bit uh, address bus. So it could address up to 64 gigabytes, even though it was a 32 bit uh, processor. And the uh, 386SX, another classic one, 32 bit internally, but it only had a 16 bit data bus. So there are always exceptions to these rules about what is 8-bit, what is 16-bit, what is 32-bit, because of course the engineers could actually design it any way they want. We're talking about the general norm inside of a processor, the internals of the processor, what is the width of the registers and the integers and so on. So this is kind of how the ARM architecture has developed over the years. This goes up to ARM V8. 
uh, of course we've now got ARM v9 but ARM v9 is sticking at 64 bits now so as we go over the different generations different things get added in the important thing is when you get to ARM v8 you've got the ARM 32 stuff which is basically ARM v7 and including the things that come from ARM v6 plus you've also got the 64 bit and the key here is that they're not the same instruction set of which this one is kind of a superset of this one. In fact, that it runs in two different modes. I'm running in its 32-bit mode, or it's running in its 64-bit mode, and we'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. So the uh, the 64-bit instruction set is standalone, which means you can get rid of the 32-bit instruction set, which is what's happening, and you can say, no, I'm only going to support the 64-bit uh, instruction set, and that's where we're we're going to. The 32-bit support is being dropped, and only the 64-bit support is remaining. So let's define some terms here. Thumb 2, as you saw there, it was in ARM v6, moved into ARM v7, is a 32-bit ARM instructions that are compressed into 16-bit wide operations. This was way back in the day of the feature phones. RAM and flash storage were limited, so they wanted to reduce the code size. So they did that by taking the 32-bit instructions and compressing them down into 16-bit. That meant you lost some instructions along the way, but it basically was a way of encoding the 32-bit instructions in 16 bits and therefore made the program smaller. And then you've got uh, ARM Architecture 32, which is basically ARM v7, which is 32-bit wide, also includes Thumb 2. And ARM VA adds some new actual instructions to uh, ARM Architecture 32, so ARCH32. So that's interesting. So even with ARM V8, there were still extra things being added to uh, the 32 bit instruction set. And then you've got ARCH64, ARM Architecture 64, which is a new 64 bit instruction set. Of course, in assembly code and all that, it looks very similar to the 32 bit one. The programmers are, are going to be familiar with it, but it is its own new instruction set. And you can drop, as I said, Thumb 2 and uh, ARCH32 and still get left with ARCH64 and run programs written only in that. Now, it's just to be clear here, we're only talking about the Cortex-A process. All this talk of 32-bit and 64-bit doesn't apply to microcontrollers. So when you're looking at things like the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is based on a Cortex uh, M0+, Plus, okay, we're not talking about changes because, in fact, the ARM V8M for microcontroller architecture is 32 bits, even though ARM V8A is 64 bits, at the microcontroller level, it's still 32 bits. Registers are 32 bits, the addresses are 32 bits, okay, it's a 32 bit uh, op um, architecture. So let's just look at the difference between uh, ARCH32 and 64. Basically, the bottom line is this a, a 32 bit app can run on a 64 bit operating system as long as the ARCH32 bit support is there. Of course, ARCH64 can run on a 64 bit app, and ARCH32 can run on a 32 bit app. But ARCH64 can't run on a 32-bit app, even if they're actually that's running under some kind of hypervisor, which is running a 64-bit OS and a 32-bit OS. You can't run 64-bit versions of apps on a 32-bit operating. In other words, if you've got a 32-bit version of Android, you can't run a 64-bit app on, on top of that. What it basically means. And a classic example of that was the first ARM V8A sock from Samsung was the Exynos 5433 that was used in the Galaxy Note 4. It had four Cortex A57 cores and four Cortex A53 cores, but it only ran in ARCH32 mode. It was running a 32-bit version of Android, and it was running 32-bit apps, even though it was a 64-bit processor, because it was running in that 32-bit mode. Okay, and now that 32-bit mode is going away. That's the point of all this discussion. So let's have a look at some of the Cortex processors because this is where you'll really get to understand the difference here. So if you look at the Cortex A32, that is an ARM V8A processor, but it only supports 32-bit mode. Okay, so ARCH32 only. Whereas the Cortex A34 is also an ARM V8 processor, but it only supports 64-bit mode. Okay, so <laughs> this, this is the thing, which of the instruction sets is supporting. Now, the Cortex A35, 53, and 57 are all ARM uh, V8, and they support 32-bit and 64-bit. The A55, the A75 are ARM uh, V8 8.2, in this case, a revision of the architecture, and they support 32-bit and 64-bit. The Cortex A65 and the A65AE are ARM uh, 8.2 and they support 64-bit only and these are found in applications like or automated driving and that kind of stuff they're not in smartphones and then you've got the a76 the a77 the a78 are all arm v8 uh, version 2.2 2, 
and it only supports ARCH32 at ELL0. What's ELL? ELL0 is the least privileged exception level, in other words, apps. So it can't run a 32-bit OS. So if you notice earlier when we talked about the Cortex A57 that was running in that Samsung, that could support an, a 32-bit OS and a 64-bit OS. Now, ever since the Cortex A76, you can only run 32-bit apps, but the OS has to be 64 bits. And that happened and nobody even noticed. <laughs> we went down that path and we all picked up our new smartphones. We all had the latest whatever phone we were getting and no one even noticed that. And in fact, now we have the Cortex A710, which is an ARM V9 processor. And again, it supports ARCH32 only at EL0 for apps, basically, not the OS. Whereas the Cortex X2, the Cortex A510 are ARM V9 but they only support AR64, no 32-bit modes in those chips at all. Now, I made a statement last year saying that all their big cores would be 64-bit only in 2022. And then they followed that up with another statement this year saying that all their cores would be 64-bit by 2023. But here's the, the funny thing. The Cortex-A510, which is a little core, is already 64-bit only. And the Cortex-X2 is already 64-bit only. In fact, of the Cortex-A range, the only A range, new A range processor that is 32 and 64-bit is the Cortex-A710. So why have they made two announcements? One about 2022 and one about 2023. Well, the only possible path that makes these statements uh, stick together is this. We've now got the X2 that's 64-bit, we've got the 510 that's 64-bit, but the 710 is 32-bit. So by 2023, all three of those, their successors of course, will be 64-bit. But then why say about 2022? Because if all their big cores, that means that the successor to the A710 is going to be 64-bit by 2022, then the only possible option, that means there's going to be another little core announced, which is a 32-bit slash 64-bit processor. And then after that, we're going to see another little core announced, which is, again, 64-bit only. So it sounds like we're going to get another little core in 2022, which supports 32 bits, while the big cores have all moved to 64 bits. So if you want 32-bit support, you can still get it in this little core. And then finally, in 2023, everything will be 64 bits. So what about Apple? What's Apple's uh, status in terms of 64 bits? So as I said, it's not just ARM that are doing this. Apple's first ARM V8 processor was the A7 in the iPhone 5S. It was way back in 2013, and it was 32-bit and 64-bit. It could run both. And then from February 2015, Apple said that all iOS apps must be 64-bit compatible to get submitted to, to iTunes, to, to the App Store, whatever it's called nowadays. And then in uh, 2017, Apple announced that 32-bits will no longer work. 32-bit apps will no longer work in iOS 11 onwards. And then it actually turned out that the Apple A11, which came out just after that, which is in the iPhone 8 and the iPhone X, is 64-bit only. So Apple have already made this transition. Apple have already gone over to 64-bit only. So iOS 11 onwards is a 64-bit only OS. And the A11 onwards is 64-bit only processor. It won't run 32-bit apps. So Apple have made that transition and uh, it seems to have gone quite smoothly. And of course, Android is also moving swiftly over to 64 bits. Well, with Android, we had 64-bit uh, support added since Android 5, Lollipop. So that was in 2014, of course, because Android runs on more than just ARM. This is the AR64 and x86-64 support was added. Then from August 2019, all Google Play apps need to add support for 64 bits. And popular game engines like Unreal and Unity have had 64-bit support since, well, 2015, 2018. And as I mentioned earlier, any device with a Cortex A70 onwards can't run a 32-bit OS. So anything with a Snapdragon 855 onwards, 865, the 888, can't run a 32-bit OS. And any Cryo 400 series of CPU which is what you'll find in the Snapdragon 480, the Snapdragon 675, the Snapdragon 720, and so on, they can't run 32-bit operating systems either. They can only run 32-bit uh, uh, apps, and the 32-bit app support is going away soon as well. And so when we come to Intel and AMD, things are a little bit more complicated. 
Now you've got this thing called X8664, which is also known as X64, X86, Underbar64, AMD64, Intel64, depending on how you want to view these things. A lot of OSs like to use the word AMD64 because the first x86-64 processor was in fact the AMD uh, Octoron in 2013 and it added a new mode to the processor called long mode and in long mode it can run 64-bit, 32-bit and 16-bit code. Now because of the backwards compatibility that seems to be the way things are going and the way things will stay both on AMD and Intel at least for a few more years. However we do start to see the, the slow the disappearance of the support for the legacy stuff 16-bit and 32-bit code because some game consoles that use AMD's custom processors in them when we're talking about PlayStations and Xboxes whatever they are 64-bit only and AMD have removed all of that 32-bit code uh, that legacy support there 64-bit only and let's look at Windows and where are we with Windows 10? Well, Windows 10 supports 32-bit and 64-bit processors. However, since the Windows 10 May 2020 update, so a little more than a year now from when I'm taking making this video, Microsoft no longer ship uh, OEMs, that's the, the PC makers, Dell, HP, whoever, Lenovo, they can no longer get 32-bit versions of Windows from Microsoft. You can only get the 32-bit version if you're upgrading an older piece of hardware. And software at 32-bit Windows uh, has kind of started to be depreciated. For example, the 32-bit versions of Android Studio and the Android Emulator were depreciated in 2019 and support ended at the end of 2020. AMD no longer makes 32-bit versions of its graphics drivers, for example. And Windows on ARM, Windows on Snapdragon is ARCH64 only. So there is no ARCH32 version of Windows and ARMS, either at the app level or at the OS level. And what about another OS like Linux? Now, of course, Linux is kind of everybody's friend. It wants to support every piece of hardware and software that exists. So 32-bit support in Linux is going to stick around for a long, long time. Uh, yet it supports 32-bit and 64-bit processors. A classic case, of course, is the Raspberry Pi Zero, which, of course, you can buy today. You can install uh, Linux on it today. Is ARM v6, so that's 32-bit, and that runs absolutely fine. Of course, there are Linux versions for ARM v7, ARM v8, and ARM v9. In fact, ARM maintains the ARM64 Linux kernel tree because, of course, it is in their interest that Linux uh, works uh, well on all of their hardware. And lots of x86 32-bit distros are available available so you can still get a Linux distro for a 32-bit uh, Intel or AMD processor no problem but some of the big names like uh, Ubuntu are in the process of dropping 32-bit support Ubuntu for example haven't shipped the ISO files for Ubuntu for 32 bits for quite a number of years now. They were starting to drop support for some of the 32 bit libraries. That caught a bit of a problem. They're rethinking it but basically 32 bits is on its way out for some of the big distros. And what do we know about Mac OS? Well, Mac OS has been 64-bit only since 10.7 Lion. That was way back in 2011, so over a decade ago. And that was, of course, was on the Intel 64-bit processors. Since 2018, all new apps submitted to the Mac App Store need to support 64-bit, so they wouldn't run on 32-bit older Macs. That's the basic the problem. Since Mac OS 10.15, uh, that dropped support for 32-bit apps. That was in 2019, so a couple of years ago now. And of course, the latest version of Mac OS 11 is 64-bit only, 64-bit Intel, and 64-bit ARM in ARCH64, uh, because of course the M1 processor is an ARCH64 only, no 32-bit mode uh, processor. So in summary, what do we know? All Cortex-A processors will be 64-bit only by 2023. Android has 64-bit support at the OS level for a long, long time since Lollipop. And it's moving to 64-bit support only at the app level. Apple's processors are already 64-bit only across iOS and macOS. Uh, in terms of the OS and the app, 64-bit everywhere. That's already happened. And 32-bit support will live longer in the x86, 886 world uh, and on Windows and on Linux. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Space. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.